If blokes don't have the right skills, the problem must partly lie here, in the schoolroom, where we find a story of boys learning badly. This is Brackenhill Primary School in the Brightside area of Sheffield. But all too often, the boys are not on the bright side. Right across the board, the boys don't all um, work as hard. They don't have the same level of uh, attainment in, in anything, really, that the girls do have. That's not to generalise. That's saying in the majority. We do have some boys who are particularly bright and capable and actively move themselves on. But a lot of our boys tend to give what they feel you will accept, and it's actually making them produce more that is our major task at the moment. Forget doctors, engineers, firefighters or even pilots. Too many boys conceive of success in a way that combines intellectual limitation with utmost fantasy. So what job do you think you'd like to do when you leave school and what would be good about doing that job? I want to be a footballer and uh, uh, good about it is working with your teammates. Well done, sir. I want to be a footballer and so I can pass to my teammates and make them score. I want to be a professional football player so I can be live and out There are only 600 odd players in the Premier League and a fifth of them are foreign. Yet with the encouragement of their parents, many boys spend far more time on footy than preparing for life. They're falling behind. The local MP is worried. I believe the underachievement of boys at school is a major challenge for all of us. It's a challenge because at 11 and 16 they're clearly not performing, particularly in English and communication skills in the way they need to. But it's a challenge socially and economically because we all suffer later in life if young men are disengaged uh, both from personal relationships and from the world of work. The figures bear Mr Blunkett out. Last year, at primary level, 69% of girls reached the expected level of literacy in national tests. Only 57% of boys did. It's the same as they get older, worse, if anything. Girls have been shooting ahead at GCSE level. Boys have been improving far more slowly. The gap is now nearly 10%. I'm extremely concerned. I'm concerned about the gap at age 11 and 16, a 12-point gap uh, for primary and a, a ten point gap in uh, attainment at English and because communication, because interpersonal skills are so important in the world of tomorrow, uh, this is actually making a social and an economic difference to our communities. So displaced at work, failing at school, lacking the necessary qualifications, missing out on modernity, where is the modern man to turn? Well, he can always go back, can't he, to the bosom of his family where dad will always be valued aha says the argument not anymore things are just as bad in the home we all know that divorce in britain has been rising inexorably and divorce often means that dad goes and never comes back four in ten fathers who leave the home lose touch with their kids within five years Combined with the rising number of never-married mothers, the result is that one in five families don't have a man about the house. Well, this is entirely rational, says one line of thinking. The main value of having Dad in the house is economic. One of the results of the Joseph Roundtree Foundation research that came out in June was that men, as in terms of the breadwinner and the father figure, aren't necessarily important in terms of gender roles. The most detrimental effect of a father figure leaving the households is the fact that the male breadwinner actually leaves and throws the family into poverty. That income that the father used to bring in has now totally gone from the family.